What's up, y'all? I am back for another video. Today we are reviewing um, pretty much the last Annabelle movie, but if you're going to be honest, besides the Warrens kind of being out of it for a lot of it because they're working on another case, it pretty much really is just Conjuring 4. I guess this would have been 3 at the time because 3 didn't come out to 21, but this very much was just Conjuring 3. <laughs> you know, but... It's all right. It's not, I don't think it's as strong as creation, but I think I do like the premise. I like the other spears that were released. You know, I thought the fairy man was interesting. Black show was probably my favorite one. Then there was this adult, um, game where like all these creepy hands came out and then there was the bride. I thought the, those were interesting. So I thought like they at least brought it with this movie, but they should have just called it conjuring three. Cause that's what it was like, you know, I guess they, they made it sure, oh, well, the Warrens aren't in the film the whole time. Like, they're in the beginning. It pretty much falls right after, I think it would have been the first Conjuring. Or first or second, when they're, you know, because they show the scene where they, you know, get the doll and they, they lock it up. Um, and I thought the scares in this one, like the, like the um, creation, they did a good job with them. They weren't just generic horror movie scares. So I'll admit, the, it's like, what's frustrating is why didn't they just release this? This should have probably just been Annabelle 2, and that and the last Annabelle should have been 1. Because this at least feels like a movie. It doesn't just feel like some a cash grab. Um, I like the atmosphere for the most part of the movie. Um, decent characters. You follow Daniela, who's Daniela, no, Mary Ellen, who's babysitting their daughter, Judy. And then her friend Daniela comes over and, you know, they're bored. They end up inadvertently releasing Annabelle, who then that's where we get all these other demons coming in. And like I said, it's a decent movie. I I do like the simplicity of it. Um, Judy, the kid actress in it, is actually really good for a kid actress. Thought she was pretty good. So that's what I was saying, even though, like, the Warrens aren't fully in it. The daughter's in it. So it feels like a Conjuring 4, basically. Um, I do like, though, like I said, I like the scares. I like that this film had atmosphere. They didn't just, um, they at least somewhat added to the lore a little bit. And yeah, like this did what is, if you're going to do a spinoff like these films, you at least do this few fucking things add fucking like lore don't just oh we're gonna you know world build you know and i think they did the, decently with it granted what i wanted more of the warrens i understand they still wanted to justify making it a spinoff so they couldn't just have the warrens in it because then it would have just been con but it, it kind of is conjuring four in a fucking way but i like the movie so out of ten i gave um i guess i'd give creation a seven and a half i'd give this one a seven because I think overall it's a decent film. It's not great. Um, and I'm not saying the characters are great. They're not really. But there are some good scares. I like the final act. The scene when the, the fucking hands are all coming out of that box is creepy. And actually looked really good. Um, and I love... It's a decent... It has a... It just ends. And I kind of like it. I like the simplicity of it just ending. So... If you're going to watch the Annabelle movies, just watch one in... Oh, creation in this one creation and comes home almost as like a two-part story like that works skip the first one you don't need to watch the first annabelle just watch two and three because actually i think this one isn't bad oh even you can almost even watch it as if you want like watch conjuring one two then this one and then four and then three and just kind of look at conjuring three is almost like conjuring four because this movie really is just conjuring three that because this came out before Conjuring 3, so... So, yeah. Tomorrow... So, update. I know I said yesterday I was going to move the Godzilla review because I thought I wasn't going to be able to see it tomorrow, but it is looking like... I'm not going to say it is looking like. I could, I could definitively say it now. I don't have to... I don't have anything going on tomorrow, so I will be seeing Godzilla minus one tomorrow during the day. Probably, I think there's like a 10.30 show and I'm going to do... And then, in I'm thinking, I'm going to try, 
for either immediately after, or if not, then it, like probably this time tomorrow, I will be reviewing minus one. So I'll do spoiler reviews there. If I put thoughts anywhere else, it will probably just be on Twitter and it would only be like vague. I had to keep it vague because I have a lot of friends who are trying to see this movie and some of them haven't seen it yet. So I don't want to put like spoilers and shit. I'll save the spoilers for my review tomorrow. So I'll just probably just give a vague take. I, and I have a feeling what my take will be, but we'll see. So yeah, I'm really hyped for that. So we'll be reviewing that tomorrow. I'll do I'll do the Prowler on Saturday, probably like during the day. I think Saturday I might still do two videos. I'll do the Prowler Saturday. And then Saturday, I'm thinking during the day I'll be seeing Silent Night. And then maybe Saturday, either Saturday, yeah, Saturday night. Yeah, actually, that works. Um, Saturday um, afternoon, like morning or something, before we go see it, I'll review The Prowler. And then Saturday evening, I will be reviewing Silent Night because I think I'm going to be seeing it like during the day. And then um, Saturday, Sunday, I will be reviewing... Oh, not really. I'll be um, roasting that Collider article. So the very first Collider is gay. <laughs> well, I, you know what? I might see what else kind of other fringe articles they have out there. So we'll see. But anyway. Let's get to it. To the movie. So, yeah, now I'm remembering. It's Conjuring 1. Yeah, it's Conjuring 1. Because <laughs> we see Annabelle. Because Annabelle 1, I just remember the year Annabelle, the first one came out, 2014. And that would have been after the first one. So this would have been. So basically it starts kind of where you see where the first one started. If you remember where, you know, they get the doll and all that. And then we see the doll initially before they lock up the doll. Try to attack them. <coughs> I thought that was kind of a cool secret. So you see, the wards of all this something, where they manage to lock it in a room or to never be open again. And this is where that night of the wards have to leave because they have another case they have to look into. <coughs> And this is where we meet Mary Ellen, um, who, she's an okay character. Like, the characters you follow, really, and it's mainly only, like, a couple. Really, the main three is Mary Ellen, um, Judy, the daughter, who's actually a pretty good kid actress. And I think Mary Ellen's friend, Daniela. And, you know, they're all right. Like, I'm not saying they're great characters, but they're all right. <laughs> so, while they're bored... They kind of look around the house. Daniela finds the room with the doll. I do like that scene where you see a creepy priest follow her. It's pretty creepy. Like, they at least try to amp up the scares in this one. They didn't just, like I said, the last few. Because that was one of my biggest issues with Annabelle. The first one. And honestly, um... Fucking... The Nun movies, too. I'll throw those in there. It's just, the scares are just so generic. They just are generic modern horror movie scares. So they don't put any effort into it. It's just, put you in the dark, loud noises, lazy as fuck. They at least try with the scares. Especially when we get to the sequences later. You know, where we see the other demon, or I, I guess spirits, I'll call them spirits. And the other spirits that are released. It's like... They at least put some creativeness into that. And that's what I want, you know? I don't want just fucking generic scares. That's one of the reasons I like those first two Conjuring movies is how, like, unique they made the scares. I know it's a different franchise, but Insidious did the same thing. Like, the scares in those movies, they actually put some work into it. When you just have, oh, let's put people in a, you know, this is how we'll get a scare. We'll just put them in a dark room. And just have loud noises every fucking five seconds. And now that'll, that'll be how we... Or we'll put something in a frame. Loud noise again. It's so fucking shit. So I like that this one... These last two have... They have 
tone that down and they have actually tried with the scares. They have actually put effort into it. I'm not, I'm not going to say they're the greatest scares, obviously, because a lot of scares don't get me. I'm just going to say it. But at least I can still like acknowledge when a scare is well done. So Annabelle gets released, and obviously they initially, and they also find like, because they also find like the room with like all their other stuff, you know, they find the video of them, you know, of, um, you know, obviously Ed doing the banishing the demon away from, I'm assuming this would have been the first one again. Yeah, this would have been the first or second one. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first one. So I'll just say the first one. It's from the first one. And so they find a video of that. And obviously that's gonna, they're gonna come. That's because it's a callback later, which is gonna happen. And so this is where we meet other de the other spirits. Like I mentioned, the bride, the ferryman, who's actually ferryman was interesting. He's along with Black Sugar, they're probably my two favorite spirits of this film. The the cube was weird. I didn't really look at that as a demon though. I look a spirit. I look at that as kind of its own thing. But the bride was pretty creepy, and I thought they all had their own, you know, each had their own time. They weren't like, oh, let's spend time on the on one and just have the others just there. They actually gave time to each of them, you know, whenever the scares had to happen throughout the film. And I think a lot of it, too, why I like it, a lot of it is in this house. Yeah, they go to other, you know, scenery, but a lot of this film is in this house. And y'all know, I, I like kind of films that are, even if it's not all of it is in this one scene, you know, one um set, or, you know, one house, or this movie's in this, you know, warehouse, or in this, et cetera. I like that a lot of a movie can just take place in one place. You know, yeah, there's here and there you'll switch scenes and there's other um, sets and stuff. But I like movies that are large or a big part of a movie is just on one place. I like that shit. You, you, can't, you know, I mean, obviously this isn't the same kind because there's other there's other places in this movie. I'm not saying there are, but you know, obviously just one of the big examples to though is you know Reservoir Dogs. A lot of that is just in that one warehouse. So it's the same thing. I just, in the sense of I like movies that are just mainly in one place. A lot of it is in this house. You know, they go to other places throughout the film, but a lot of it is in this house. Or at least the scenes that matter. So a black shook kills Mary Ellen's uh, crush, Bill, um, Bill. Like, you know, he's just there to die. You know, obviously it's a horror movie. Somebody has to die. So, um... Then they have to find the key and basically do the box and try to lock the demons, thinking if they can banish Annabelle, they can kind of banish the other spirits. You know, obviously them trying to get them. And I just love this. Like, I like, like, if they just started with this, these two movies with the whole, if you want to do spinoffs, it would have worked because these are actually decent. <laughs> Unfortunately, y'all went with Holden the Nun, who. Now that I think about it, of the two, I don't know, I can kind of agree that the nun, not me, the, the, the Annabelle didn't really need a spinoff either, but I actually would argue that the fucking, um, nun didn't really need one. If you're gonna do one, but they didn't, they didn't actually put effort in. It seemed like they at least, these last two, they have at least put fucking effort in. So I can at least give them that. But, um, so they managed to, um, banish Annabelle by playing, obviously, the projector with the video of Ed, you know, banishing it initially. So they managed to play it, and it banishes Annabelle, it locks Annabelle back in the box. They managed to kind of basically fix it. I will admit, if I had one negative, I do think everything kind of wrapped up in a bow way too perfectly. I would have liked a little bit more struggle. I, I felt like... It was like, okay, we got to end, so we're just going to have them. And I'm not against movies wrapping everything perfectly in a bow at times, but I felt like this was a little too much of that. It was like, oh, okay, so they just banished the demon. All right. So um, Ed and Lorraine get back. Danielle, uh, uh, you know, apologizes to Lorraine for releasing Annabelle, you know, and they have a nice set of words in the end of it. And to me, this... To me, Annabelle's two movies. Granted, I don't even really look at this as an Annabelle movie. But I still say argue. I'd argue it's still Conjuring three, or three. You know what? Okay, I say it like this: Conjuring three point one. 
and then Conjuring 3 is 3.2. So there's technically two Conjuring 3s. Because that's what this is. This doesn't feel like an Annabelle movie. I mean, yeah, the Warren, you know, the Ed and Lorraine, I'll just say, aren't in the film much. They're in the beginning, and then they're in the end. Um, I, I'm thinking there's a scene where they at least call, so there's at least you get a, another, but that's it. Like, they largely is just... And it makes sense, though. You know, they're on a case, so... But overall, I do like this movie for what it is. It, it, you know, it's not amazing. It's not perfect. I think they could have had stronger characters a little bit. Maybe stronger side characters. I think the main three were following were all right. It's just the other characters were just kind of... We're just kind of there. You know? <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> but aside from that, that's a good, decent score, honestly. Not amazing, but for me, <coughs> scores <coughs> score is big for me in horror. Especially, granted, score in general is big for me, but especially in horror. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, look at Halloween. I love that movie, but you wanted one of the biggest things that made that movie was the soundtrack. You know, and I think the, the soundtrack in this one was pretty. It stood out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give him that you know decent scares um I liked the other demon or you know spirits black shook was cool ferryman was cool I thought each of them all of that scene in the end we know when the girls are trying to escape from the hands coming out of the box that was creepy I'll be honest that was actually probably the genuine creepiest thing in the movie so I'd actually watch it again granted I, I don't I wouldn't watch it as an Annabelle movie like I mentioned, I'm basically going to watch it as a Conjuring movie. Just Ed and Lorraine aren't in it fully, but it's still a Conjuring movie. So so it's a 7 out of 10 movie. I Like I said, I'd watch it again. But uh, tomorrow, guys, I cannot fucking wait, man. Godzilla minus one. I, I've been saying this for a while. This could eclipse John Wick as my favorite. John Wick 4 as my favorite film this year. And I think it might. Everything I'm hearing is just incredible i'm even hearing good fucking human characters so okay guys i can't wait to talk about that tomorrow um so i'll be doing that tomorrow saturday two videos i'm gonna review the prowling prowler jesus the prowling <laughs> i think it's because i was thinking the howling and yeah so i'll be reviewing the prowler to on saturday like probably a little bit before i go see silent night and then in the evening Silent Night review, and then Sunday, um, I'll be roasting Collider, and then, I guess really quick, I know it's Thursday, but I'll just go into it, I think I largely have an idea what I'm going to do next week, Monday, I'll be doing um, Ironclad, it's a movie my friend Steve recommended, so I'm just going to push that to Monday, so, so no list stream next Monday, following Monday, I'll be back with 2008. Next Tuesday, Evil Bong. Next Wednesday, I'll probably get, honestly, I might get back to, I know I did the first Transporter like a month or two, no, two months ago, right before Halloween. It's just Halloween came. I had a guy in no, Halloween to basically October slash November a little bit. I was kind of focusing on horror. I guess I still kind of am, but those specific months, it was basically all horror I was doing besides some stuff. So I figure we did the first Transporter, so why not get we'll get to the sequel? So I'll be doing Transporter 2. Actually, no, 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 not now. I, I, I just remember what I'm going to do. I'll We will get back to that, though. Because next Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm going to be doing Dead Snow. My, it's another movie. So basically, it's going to be three... Movies in a row that my friend C recommended me. Thursday, I think I will do, I'll do um, Transporter 2. So next Thursday, I'll take, I was going to do La Lorna. I might watch it still, but I won't review it. I might just take this, because since it's the last one, because I kind of want to review Transporter 2. Transporter 2 is fucking awesome. So I think I will do that, but I will, I'll still like, I'm still going to do La Lorna the following Thursday and then we'll figure out what I'm going to do on Thursdays after that. But next Thursday, just because I want to do it, Transporter 2. 
And then next Friday... Ugh, sorry, guys. And then next Friday will be Evil Bomb. So that's my schedule for basically the next week. So, but other than that, guys, we'll take one more hit. And uh, Annabelle Comes Home was good. It was decent. So these last two have actually been pretty fucking decent. I'll, I'll give them that. 